right, it is a beautiful day. It is March 23rd, and it is so nice. I'm so happy that it is finally feeling like spring now. Um, we had a really nice rain yesterday, and the sun is out today, and the birds are chirping. And I love this time of year because you don't hear lawnmowers going in the background and air conditioning units blaring away. And it's just really, really a nice time of year, I think. And you get out and you can start growing some things. And I have a few things that have survived from my last year's fall garden. Or actually, this, these are leeks over here. Somehow they survived. <laughs> and then, of course, I have my carrots, which I felt pretty confident those would make it through the cold, cold winter. And then cilantro. Really nice cilantro there, as you can see. Um, and then over here I have spinach. It's doing great. Beautiful, beautiful spinach. And I, I'm draping little solar light bulbs over the planters. It looks really pretty at night, and I don't have to figure out a way to plug them in because they have the little solar stake there. I can just put it right in my planters. I think I got these on big at Big Lots last year for their... Um, after season clearance sales. I have another one here. I'm sure you can find something like this on Amazon if you like that idea too. But we could be cooking out at night and just have all these lit up. I think it would look it looks pretty at night. You know and I like it. So anyway, so here is the spinach. It's doing great. It's starting to resume some growth um, after a long cold winter. Y'all know we got down to a zero degrees Fahrenheit and then um, I think the wind chill was negative 20. I did cover these up with a frost cloth. Now this year I'm doing something a little bit different out here. I am going to um, reorganize my planters so they are more at uh, this height right here at the deck rail height so I can you know enjoy my little view. Last year everything was too little too tall for me out here and it also make it easier for me to water than with a watering can here at the top much easier there and so this is the leaf planter and I will have five tiers um, for the leaf and then I'm going to take one tier off of my originals and I'll have four tiers there okay and so what I'm doing with the extras is I'm making more planters so this one um, are two of the leaf tiers you know the leaf are just a little bit smaller perfect for lettuce um, and then I'm ordering a couple more water reservoirs drip trays, another tier here and there, and then of course um, these little spinners which I just love. They just um, make it so much easier on a small deck for me to maneuver um, and water them, feed them, tend to my plants. Okay, it just makes it a lot easier. When I had my planters on my driveway, the movers were fine. That's where they don't really spin very easily. You can, like this is a mover. And I didn't really need to have it in one spot like I do in a small space. So the movers were fine when I had them in my driveway, but I really like the little spinners for my deck. Okay? And they have a great sale going on right now. So um, I shared that on my community tab. Uh, I'll let you guys know there was a sale. So I think it goes through March 27th. And it's real unique. You don't have to buy a certain kind of product. You can mix and match what you need and possibly get a discount if you spend a certain amount plus you can use my code rainbow gardens at checkout and get a discount so i'm an affiliate obviously they send me these products so i can grow things and show you guys how i do it okay now over here i have some lettuce started these are my lettuce transplants uh, i like to grow the spatavia type and um, that's also called like a summer crisp it does great it's just a beautiful type of lettuce to grow. I highly recommend growing summer crisp. I think I got my seeds at Johnny's Seeds. So um, you can check that out. They have a couple different types. I also have bib over here in endive. Okay, so these will go in my um, green stock planter as well as that one too. It's another crisp. And then here in the middle I have broccolini, cauliflower, and uh, Chinese cabbage. Those will go in my square foot garden in the front, which I'll show you here in just a minute. So, um, I've had these outside. I'm hardening them off, trying to acclimate them to uh, new temperatures. I've been doing this probably, I would say, about a month. <laughs> so, they are ready to get in the soil outside for sure. Scallions back there. And then over here, I wanted to show off my eggs. <laughs> Our little hens 
they're the prairie bluebell eggers that's the hoover hatcheries um, hybrid that lays blue eggs and I just ordered some more blue egg layers from the Murray uh, hatchery and those their hybrid I think is called a blue whiting which I've had before they, they lay beautiful eggs as well the beautiful blue eggs so these are the prairie bluebell eggers and they're laying four a day for us right now we have five and I just really really enjoying having fresh eggs again we stopped for um, the chicken business for about two months there over the winter I just raised some chicks and got rid of our older flock I sold them I sold the older flock and um, and just had had to buy store-bought eggs for a little while there but here we go I've got some beautiful eggs they're a real pretty blue color there are um, a few in here that are olive colored so one of our little hens is popping out a little olive colored egg which is fine and then as I showed you guys a couple of years ago in my chicken video when we collect our eggs we just put them here this little thing where I keep it on the counter and before I put them into the refrigerator I'll wash them off in water that's just a tad bit warmer than the actual temperature of the egg that's because they're porous and I don't want to put bacteria in force bacteria into the egg shell so I always use uh, tap water that's a little bit warmer and then I put them in cartons and they go into the refrigerator until we're ready to eat them so we've got a lot of eggs we need to start working on here <laughs> okay and now let me show you what else I'm working on um, here are some seed potatoes I got from the feed and seed store I'm chitting these indoors um, I just put them out here because the lighting is a little bit better I can show you guys uh, how they look and I just like to lay them in a single layer in indirect sunlight in these little crates I get these at Aldi they usually have these setting in the aisle um, and so that you can just pick these up when you go to Aldi or somewhere like that and these are some potatoes I saved from last year and I have German butterball in here and Peter Wilcox I'm not sure how these are going to do because as you can see the German butter butterball right there are real wrinkled up but my other ones look a little bit better and I also have Kennebec now when I go to um, plant these I'll put one seed potato per pocket in my original planter tiers and so I experimented last year and if I put one of these smaller type potatoes not the Kennebec because those get pretty big I'll do the Peter Wilcox or the German Butterball and I'll put one of those per pocket in the original tier I'll get uh, four pounds of potatoes at least four pounds a little bit more and so that'll be 20 pounds of potatoes uh, per original planter okay so I'm gonna pick up some more German Butterball uh, they don't store as as good as the Peter Wilcox which are the purple skin um, but I can eat those German Butterball up uh, pretty quick so um, and then I'll just pop the rest of these potatoes here that are the real big Kennebecs and one of the other little garden beds I have maybe the one that I have out at the river I can just put all those out there and I don't really cut my potatoes and a lot of people do I kind of experimented a little bit last year with cutting potato versus just putting the whole seed potato right in the soil and I didn't really notice much of a difference so I'm just trying to cut down on my steps of what I have to do first I'm sure some people um, you know everybody has their own way of doing things that's just how I do it <laughs> okay so now I'm going to make some dirt I'll show you guys that and then I am going to take you to the front square foot garden I'm going to unplug my fountain here for just a minute okay so now I want to make a little bit of dirt I want to show you guys what I've been doing I pretty much do this every day I have my little loamy composter out here outside today because I need to change the carbon filter in there and I haven't gotten around to it and it's smelly if you don't so you have to make sure you keep your carbon filter changed in these things um, so let me get in here and I'll show you what we have so I did a review on this um, I think in November of last year and I showed you guys how much I've been really enjoying using this here we have some dirt that it was just uh, this was banana peelings and tea bags and um, grapefruit rinds and all of that yesterday so now it's this put a little bucket right back in here line up my arrows
And I'm going to use one of these little loamy pods in here, which will make my dirt a little bit more healthy. Put that right in there like that. A little bit of water on top. Use some of this rain water here. I'm going to switch my cycle to grow mode. I'll just leave a link to the video where I showed all of this. Now, I also am an affiliate for this uh, company, and you can get $50 off the purchase of one of these uh, if you use my uh, link. So, um, I will leave my link down below in the description area of the video if you're interested. Okay, there we go. Now, this obviously is not meant for the outdoors. Like I said, I'm just putting this out here until I can get my carbon filters and put them in here. I usually have this in a covered area, but I moved it out here so I could show you guys this. Um, but I just need to change my filters because I don't want it to be a little bit smelly inside the house. So it's working away. I can hear it. Now I'm going to show you my square foot garden. Okay, so here's the square foot garden. And um, since my last tour of this little garden in February, my peas are now up. So, real happy about that. Um, carrots, some of those survived over here in this bed. And so that's great. I'm going to put my little transplants here. I'll put those out probably today. And then, of course, more peas. I put a lot of peas out this year. Tarragon looks beautiful. Highly recommend growing French tarragon if you can. And just you'll have to buy that from a transplant and a cutting. Um, because you cannot grow that from seed. So it has a very subtle flavor, um, just really good. Um, so if you can find that, pick it up because I did a whole video to show you how to grow it. You'll need to have a little bit of a cold winter for it to survive year to year. It'll come back, it comes back for me every year. And then, of course, carrots looking great. More peas right over there in the corner. Um, and the oregano is about to take off. As you can see, it's greened up really nice. And then I have some scallions over there and a thyme plant that's struggling a little bit. I don't know that it rooted down good enough before uh, we had the cold snap come through because we had a lot of heat in February and then we had some cold. So I don't know what's going on with this weather here. It's been crazy. Okay, and then... Um, of course, my rosemary. The chives are beautiful right now. As a matter of fact, after I do this, I think for lunch I'll have some eggs with chives in it. Those are, that'll be just wonderful. Okay, and we put in a new blueberry bush. Look at the size of this bush. And this is a northern high bush. It'll work real well with the other blueberry bushes that I have here. And I think this is a mid-season, so it didn't bloom out for me in February like this one did. This one started to bloom out. It's my early, I think this is blue crop. I'm not real sure. I'll have to look it up. But anyway, it bloomed out early. And I put one of the green stock frost cloth over it when we had that cold snap last week. And I don't, I don't know that um, it's going to survive. Some of this still looks green on here. So I might still get an early blueberry crop. I just don't know. That's one of those real tricky crops. My Apple trees did not bloom out yet, so I should have apples this year. And I showed you guys how we planted apples and did a follow-up. How we've been actually harvesting apples, too. So, that was fun. And then my mid-season bushes are here. And here looks like it actually has a little bit of blooms on this one, oddly enough. Okay. Over here, I cut this one way back. I don't know that this is going to survive or do anything, but... It was in pretty bad shape, so it was not very healthy. So that's an experiment. Don't y'all do that. <laughs> and then this one here. I added that one last year. And then, of course, this one. So those are our blueberry bushes. And I put the little shepherd's hook in the middle so I can hang a mosquito net that's made for to put over a bed. Put it on there and then drape it all over the bushes to keep the birds from eating them. The bird netting is just terrible told y'all that before, but uh, you, when you pull the bird netting off, um, all your blueberries come off too. <laughs> so the mosquito netting works great. Keeps the birds away and it's very easy to work with when it's time to harvest those blueberries that you have worked so hard for. Okay? Now, actually, I'm going to walk down to the little garden by the 
a pond. I've not shown you guys that before, I don't think. And I just throw different things down there. If I have extra seeds, I'll throw it down there. Um, I might, uh, if I have extra potato, seed potatoes, I'll put them down there. It's just an overflow area. It's not something I even water or pay any attention to. So let's walk down there and see what's growing. It's always fun growing something down here because I never know what's popping up. But if I have an extra plant, this is, and I don't want to throw it away like a French tarragon or something, I'll put it down here. So it's always, like I said, fun to see what's popping up out of the soil down here. And it looks like um, a French tarragon is doing well here. Okay. And then over here is where I dug up some of that oregano that I have in the upper garden. And I just pulled out a stem, a root, and popped it over here, and it looks like it's greening up there at the base. So that should take root. It looks like it's doing pretty good. And thyme, oregano, and mint, you can all do those the same way. Just take up a little bit with some root on it, pop it in some soil, keep it watered until it roots down, and you'll have a brand new plant. And I'll leave a link to that video in case you missed it some chives. These I used to have on my deck upstairs, but every year they just got covered up with aphids and I didn't want to throw it away. So there you have it. I have um, a nice little chive plant down here, as well as a good patch of cilantro. I just took a lot of my extra cilantro seeds that bolted, tossed them in the soil, and there you have it. It looks like there's some more, more tarragon back there. I may have just popped that in there. Okay. Um, mint growing up all through the mulch here. This is where I used to have uh, my garden when I first moved here. This is this was my um, real main garden. It was down here. I have since took those beds and moved them up to the front and these were beds we made during COVID. I figured I needed some extra growing room when the whole COVID thing happened. <laughs> it was crazy. And um, I'm not sure what this is here. Um, oh, radishes. I threw out some radish seeds, so I need to thin those. I don't really care for radishes. That's why they're down here. <laughs> I just didn't want to throw the seeds away. Okay, and over here, I planted a lot of nice things. Some garlic, um, and I lost a lot of it to the freeze. Looks like something else has been over here digging around. So, anyway, I have one, looks like I have one garlic plant there. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> something has maybe even pulled it up. What would eat garlic? Nothing likes to eat garlic. If y'all know, let me know because, I mean, it really looks like somebody has just come through here or something has come through here and just picked all the garlic out. It doesn't look like footprints to me. <laughs> okay, and then over here we have shallots. These are looking great. I really just did not know if these would survive because they all just toppled over and died with the cold weather. And so it looks like I might actually have some shallots this year. That would be great. Back here, something has obviously been digging around in this bed. But like I said, this is not my main garden. I just throw stuff down here. So it's always fun if I see something growing. Had a little bit more garlic over here. And let's see. Um, more cilantro. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this because we're doing Mexican tonight. Anyway, I'll get that in just a bit. But there you go. That's what's growing in March here in western North Carolina. And thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.